Welcome Wargamers, join your hosts, Falco and Monty, two Canadian wargaming enthusiasts, as we explore all aspects of tabletop wargaming. We roll dice, talk tactics, share hobby hacks, and explore new tabletop systems, all on the Trident Wargaming Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to Trident Wargaming. I'm your host, Bill, and we are joined with my co-host, Andy. Hey guys. And our special battle bro, Alex. Hello. And uh, I guess to kick things off, we're going to jump into a little bit of hoppy stuff, see what was going on the weekend. I know just pre-show here, Alex was telling me he got all the things with paint this weekend, so why don't you tell oh. us about that? One of the new guys in the in the 30k group mm-hmm. chat made a post that like fully paints for finishings or finishers, and I was like, motherfucker! Was so that a certain Imperial Fist player, Shoot it was. <laughs> it was a call out. Like it was like a, like a, like a real low key call out. So mm-hmm. I went whole whole hard here. I got uh, 30 tacticals, uh, 10 cacophony, two contemptors. Um, Two Poth carries, uh, one champion, one Praetor, and uh, I'm, I'm just on the last kind of finishing touches and bases for my uh, 10 uh, Palatine Blades. Wow. Nice. That's awesome. Nice. So I'm hoping I'm hoping to have uh, the maybe one more Contemptor that Rhino has done for the event at the end of the month. Nice. Was that, uh, was that Cam or Jay who's throwing it out? Cam, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's awesome. pretty good. I, I don't know how to follow that. Um, that's definitely, a, that's what are you doing, Andy? Definitely did not get that much painted. Um, got some gold trimming done on some Sekmek, and uh, I almost got my Praetor done. So, Ooh. did that last night through our little uh, Discord hobby night uh, for. Our local community, the Warriors Lodge. So, um, did that. Had a couple of Marines done up as well. So, um, but yeah. Uh, otherwise, hobby. I ended up slamming three games in on the weekend. So, yeah, you're a game master. To, yeah, you know, had to throw out some wizardry at, at people. Try out the Thousand Suns for the first time. So, a lot of fun. That'll be a that'll be a different story for another time. To uh, it's nice that in in the games, um, it'll, it kind of relates to some of our topics here as well, with like dreadnoughts and stuff. So it'll be it'll be good. We'll talk about that when we get to it. But uh, okay. yeah, that was kind of my hobby, and then helping Bill a couple days there, uh, building, painting some stuff. So, well, this is yeah. true. This is true. It uh, was a busy weekend. Um, had some. Uh, terrain building and painting nights over this weekend and honestly it's probably been like a 25 maybe 30 man hour weekend of just straight up terrain and uh it's coming along it's it's getting really good i'm almost done five totes completely are pretty close so that is bonkers um, yeah and with it being you know august 1st i'm feeling pretty good we got 26 days Till the event drops for Iron Within, uh, it's going to be pretty legit. Um, yeah, we've got some uh, 40k singles happening on the Saturday. On Sunday, it's 40k doubles, and then we also have a, a singles heresy event, which should be really fun. I'm hoping to see a lot of uh, Warrior Lodge players out there and kind of rolling dice and getting their reps in. And the, the whole the whole point of it's trying to uh, really build a community and get um, experienced players and new players together. Start running everybody through, get everybody up to the same uh, speed, rules wise, and uh, start going from there. And then we're starting our slow grow league this upcoming weekend as well, which is going to be uh, a lot of fun. So many things on the go. Other than that, I haven't done SFA. I, I really haven't done much uh, this weekend. Other than all the terrain. 
So this week it is, it is like it is an together. awful lot of train. Like don't undersell it. it. <laughs> no, it, 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 is, it is. It is. It is. Pictures, it, Bill. It's Pictures or didn't happen. It's obscene. It's um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like sixteen totes in my garage, all with you know between eight to ten pieces in each tote, and yeah, we got to get get them all painted based on these nice hardboard bases that uh, special someone named Hal. Was putting sand on. So, nice. Yeah, he did a lot. He did a lot actually. He cranked out a shit ton of them, and uh, I was rolling like crazy today, man. Black chum glad paint all over. Um, but yeah, there is a, there is a lot of terrain. Pictures to come, or if you're following us on our uh, socials, you'll see uh, links in the description. Check it That's out. Right. Uh, there's you can see the chaos unfold. You can either cheer me on or try to uh, you know wish bad upon me, but. If you do, you're a fucker. So, um, thumbs up is good. Yeah, thumbs up are good. <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. Now we still yeah. have you still have slots for uh, for more players for the uh, the events, right? You said yeah. There is yeah. There's um, eleven slots uh, still for the forty k singles. I've got enough left for I believe it's five more teams, so ten more players for the doubles. And only four left for the heresy uh, event. Which oh wow! Is nice, yeah. I was gonna say maybe we have to do a big commercial, you know. So just to might have to, try, you know, iron within. You Whatever know? <laughs> we can do to try and drum up some some players. Maybe we'll do a calendar, you know. Men of the Warrior mm. Lodge. Mm. <laughs> the Legionnaires. <laughs> yeah. Just oh with like chibi versions of ourselves with our <laughs> legion background. Yes. Oh, that'd be here's awesome. Here's some uh here's some of your warlord traits. Yeah. Yeah. Killer. But I guess I guess kicking kicking into the first part here of our uh little show, we wanted to talk about tactical support squads. Um mm-hmm. and why rotor cannons suck. Or at least why they <laughs> why I why I think they do anyways. Um I guess first things first, I I can go first. I think rotor cannons look really cool model-wise, and they look neat on paper until you're, and I'm going to quote Dan, until you're starting to roll fives to wound regular Marines because they're strength three, and you're doing fuck all. (laughs) And probably not getting any pins either. Um where comparatively, if you, you know, are going with uh, my favorite, which would be Melta, um, I think it's going to be an all-around really good uh, one to pick. But I just, yeah, if you're going to take them, you're going to spend the points. I, I think that Melta guns are the way. Um, I don't know. It's just me. Mm. That's just me. And if you want range, calibers all the way. So... Yeah, I think I think given the option between between the caliber and the rotor cannon, the caliber just stands out across the board in every way. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It That's does. it. Okay, we've solved tactical sports squads. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I mean Yeah, Meltas yeah. of course. Um for myself, I'm gonna experiment a little bit with with the Thousand Suns, because they can change out um, the plasma gun for their own version. Yeah. Um, I think it's the. Just gotta do it here. I can't remember the actual name of it, but um, an aether fire blaster, I believe, is what it's called. <clears throat> so it ends up becoming. It's 18 inch range, so it's short. Strength six, AP four, salt two, rending six. But then it has the Asian force, so I can activate that force to give it plus two strength. So now it's a strength eight, AP four, rending six, salt two. And there's uh, there's a little combo you can do with, with the thousand suns, right? You can um, give yourself a psychic power. You can get an extra three inches move, so you kind of catch up a little bit, but yeah. or put yourself in a rhino. But uh, I'm gonna try that out just to see. I mean, strength eight, you know, um, shots. Even if one gets through a terminator because he failed his regular save, yeah, right. So it's a good point, though. Like, why aren't we talking plasma? Is it just because of the four up now? Uh, there's they they changed like it's why. changed for sure. It took a big hit. Um, 
if I if I'm going specifically with uh, word bearers, I'll go plasmas all the time, only because I'm going to upgrade them to a warp fire blaster, which is a better uh, plasma gun all around uh, for five points more. So I'm the same points as a melted gun. It uh, ends up being a 24 inch strength six AP four, breaching four plus um, shot salt two, and it doesn't get hot. So I'll yeah, take I'll take mine. those I'll take those over plasmas any day, um, just because assault two at twenty four inches is really good. Strength six though, eh? Strength six, but when you're when you're trying to fire against you know uh, contemptors, let's say you're just fishing for fours. So mm. just trying to get those breaching shots, really. Wouldn't you need fives to wound a contemptor though? Mm, for the strength six, toughness seven, strength, strength six toughness seven, yeah. But I, yeah. I thought that the the breaching would override that. Does it? That's interesting. Have to double check. So, like to get back to it, I'm actually, thinking. I think plasma's still good. Yeah. For you know a cheap alternative, five marines with five plasma guns, um, in a rhino, um, is a is a cheap um, get out of dodge. If your opponent's taken lots of terminators, mm. and like the, the odds are you aren't going to get you know three or four breaches, which does allow you to actually do damage, and for the for the cost of the melta, like it's just it's it's just it's almost untenable. Like fifteen points per model, that's another marine. Yeah, well, fifteen points is not cheap, that's for sure. Yeah, because they're still strength seven, right? Plasmas. Yeah, like right base yeah, plasma so, strength seven. I mean. Terminators have two wounds now, so Kinda. at least you're full of nivels. What about so again? Like I, I kind of agree with you that like I think Melt is the only option, really, um, unless you've got some kind of like Legion tech that makes one of the other options better. Yeah. Um, and if you really want to take them, and you're not going to take them to bust dreadnoughts or uh, Terminators or something else, then the Caliber kind of seems like the only other option. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's it like I don't know about you guys. Uh, I'm sure, like you just mentioned, like a five man team. But like, would you go ten man team at all? Not with uh, not with a plasma or melta. No, just too much or what? Yeah, I think it, I think it's just too expensive. Mm. Like you're talking like to be honest, you're talking twenty. Um, would that be minimum 24 points to 31 points per model? That's getting into like a Terminator level. That's Just pay points level for Terminators. Right there. Yeah. Hmm. And you get two wounds with an invul save. Yeah. Who cares if you got to walk up the board? Yeah. You are correct. I would need fives peeking in. So the breaching does override that. Does not. So. Yeah, it's interesting because I think like with. Like going with five man teams. Like I, I was going to try a ten man team with my upgrade, but uh, I don't know. There's other wep other units out there that just will do the job better, right? You know, heavy support squads and stuff like that. So, um, so I don't know. There's you have options, but like you said again, for the support teams, Melta. Yeah, and I I agree as well. I think a five man. Uh, five man team is probably as big as I would go um, for plasmas or meltas. Caliber, I'd probably go up to ten pretty confidently, just because of the range that you're going to be able to do. So, hmm. so like points wise, though, you know, I, I understand what we're talking specifically about <coughs> about uh, support squads, but like 135 points is your base cost if you're taking anything that's lethal. Like, don't get me wrong, there's, like, Death Guard taking Flamers is a good option and stuff like that. There are some some reasons to take base Flamer squads. Absolutely. But right. for 135 points, um, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a squad of five tacticals with support weapons with one wound and a three-up, or would you take, like, a Javelin? Or, like, a Proteus Lance Beater for 90 points? It's a good like just question. Like when you get when you get to that 135 point level, there's actually quite a lot of options out there that are potentially more mobile, 
just as lethal and maybe a little bit more robust. Well, That's why, like, I have a hard time placing support like, squads. I guess, I guess, in that that kind of comparison, like to a, a javelin or whatever, right? You, you got, I guess, you got to also look at the tactical flexibility of the unit. So, you know, a javelin. Well, you know what your javelins are doing. They're going in, trying to target those vehicles, get on their flank, get on the get on the behind of the armor, right? And usually, what you might have. A multi melt on it, maybe last cans, maybe probably the cyclone missile launchers, maybe some hundred killer missiles, and um, <clears throat> or with the new Volkites that they have now, right? Pretty much, you got you got some firepower. You don't have a whole rack of you know a heavy support amount of firepower, but all you need is to be in that right position and get that hit. So. What you what you do get for almost the same price is you get a I get I'm just like devil's advocating here, mm-hmm. Legion Javelin Squadron one Javelin toughness six four wounds three up save, fourteen inch move plus a skill four with two las cannons, um, a multi melta and two hundred killer missiles for ten points less than a support squad, and it's arguably tougher. It's got yeah. four wounds toughness six with a three up, and it's got outflank deep strike relentless. Harbingers of the Legion and hit and run. That's pretty sexy for 120 it's points. Pretty good versus 135 for the support squad. And again, like I think, I think you guys actually hit the nail on the head there with like, there's a lot of Legion traits that feed into support squads. Yeah. That you know, I'm talking just uh, generic Legion Astartes point sufficiency. Um, whereas like you were talking, we were right, Bill. Like for Warpers, like the 15 points per model makes them way better as a straight plasma option. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say my thousand sons are just I believe it's straight across the board. They just swap it, so something to try my, out. My EC have no room for support squads. No? <laughs> no, not whatsoever. I will I will admit to once you start getting into the uh that kind of point level, you are starting to kinda of, a tactical support squad's gonna start competing with some of the other choices in the book, like seeker squads, a saber strike squadron. And even going back to the other, the Proteus Land Speeder, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. They're only, like, the Proteus Land Speeder is only T5, but it's still got three wounds. It starts at 60 points base. All right, don't get me wrong. The double da- double grav uh, Proteus, yeah. what is that, for an extra 25 points? So 60, 85 yeah. points for double grav. Ooh. It's pretty Ooh. good. For legions, specific, like, we're talking just straight up legions, generic units. That's pretty damn good. Right, being able to throw out uh, some grab shots like that. I guess, uh, like as you start playing, like as I, I think we're going to be going to like three thousand points. That's, I mean that. That's the goal. I mean that five that five man support squad might just get wiped off the board anyways. So yeah. <laughs> use those points there... some, somewhere else, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Ox. Is there is there a way to put them in a support squad or in a in a uh, a drill? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Or maybe a drop pod red of war. Drop pod, sure. Just something because like ten melted guns, you know, as a throwaway. Still fucking expensive, though. God. Well, what are you trading for, right? Yeah. You know, like, it, we've seen it in the past, too, where you drop a squad, you take out a unit, and then you get taken out, so you're swapping kill points. But how many points is it? it is it going to take out? Take out If you take out a Spartan, hey, phew, cool, right? You did your job. But, again, <clears throat> literally hit or miss, right? So, as for the drill, I'm not uh, 100% sure. Drill, I don't think you can. It can't be taken separately, only as a dedicated, so unless... unless so you can put them in a drop pod, it's 380 points for 10 melted guns in a drop pod. That's, oh, that's a lot. That's too much. That's a lot, that's right. That is a lot. Too many points. For sure. Hmm. And again, when you're talking, like, when you get into that point level, like, you're talking like a Leviathan. Um, or... Uh, veterans. Yeah. I was going to say, right? yeah. 
And if you do veterans, you copy can copy weapon it. Yeah. You know? Dude, they can take a drill. Probably your better bet then. But yeah, absolutely. Five man teams, yeah. smaller games maybe, uh, larger games maybe. If you like, you said throwaway unit. Yeah. But. So why? <laughs> we we kind of we brushed over it. Why do rotor cannons suck? <laughs> Other than the wound. <laughs> I just. I think strength three is what really kills it for me. Yeah, absolutely. Five plus two one sucks. If it was, if it was even a they're fine. Last guns. If it was strength four, I'd be all over it. At least you could be rolling fifty fifty against other legion squads. But yeah, strength three is just super super tough to swallow. Like I said, they look cool out of the special weapons. It's probably one of the coolest looking ones that they have. But it's just, yeah. Are we are we are we missing the boat here? Is there legions like uh, like what about night uh, night lords? Do they get you know? Is there something better? Um, like first round, you're technically neg two, right? You're neg one for the weapon plus your neg, neg one, one for knife fighting. fighting. Yeah. Strength three, assault four, pinning. It's a thirty inch range. That's probably the best thing it's got going for it. Uh, night lords, I could see these. I could see them making use of it. I'm just trying to think. Like we, you know, we play legions that obviously plasma makes better use of. Is there a legion that rotor cannons make sense for? Like what about uh, imperial fists? It's an assault, isn't it? Assault bolt it weapon yep. counts as one of their an auto weapon. Yeah. Two up. <laughs> yeah. So those, I mean, I, I think twos. with I think you're looking more for the pinning on this weapon in general, right? That's the big selling feature. Yeah. 30 inch so, range and pinning. But again, uh, fish So, okay, size. okay, so so here's an idea. Uh, my Thousand Sons, I'll go back to them. Uh, they have their minor arcana, which um, you can activate one of them, and it, it forces uh, the opponent to do a pinning test. <clears throat> I believe they'll get an extra negative or something like that, right? So. You can use that, I guess, with the rot rotary cannon to to try to pin the opponent. Um, otherwise, you could use a different spell to like try to target and knock out, um, you know, knock out a sergeant or something or poth carry like that with it, and then pin them. But just with the strength yeah. three, a strength three is kind of like I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on it, right? There's other things like, that you can do that would. There's a there's a good chance you're not going to wound a whole lot because they're going to make saves. Um, yeah. So really, you're only counting on the pinning, and then you're you know if they've got a Dexella or <clears throat> you know any standard now uh, requirement for tacticals, you're you're talking like you're you're betting on a like a fifteen or sixteen percent chance of making the unit flee. That's pretty rough odds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff for uh pinning you know um there's psychic powers that can that do a better job at it than that weapon would but yeah i don't know i i didn't even look at really look at the rotor cannon i just i knew it was strength three and it was kind of like me so. which is ironic because i think we're going to talk about contemptors next and one of the things that makes contemptors so awesome is toughness seven yeah. so like to go towards like a meta where like hey don't worry i've got 1500 strength three shots going to turn one what are you gonna do like i've got four contemptors you're wounding on sixes or you're not wounding yeah you're not doing anything because he's still gonna get his two up save yeah exactly mm. yeah all right okay next okay. tactical support squads yeah let us know let us know if we uh if we hit it i think we hit the hit the mark for sure so, contemptors, contemptors have popped up quite a bit lately. Yeah. Um, there seem to be the big, the big baddies, and everybody seems to be kind of worried about them. In um, events, there's talk of uh, certain events banning the uh, Walk of the Ancients Rite of War. Oh hell no! There's there's a lot of different talk about 
you know, certain things are too strong. One saying, you know, that they're broken. I don't know. It's there's a lot to take in with that, to be honest with you. So, so why are they broke? Why are contemptors broke? Oh, why aren't they? Fury of the Ancients. That's the one. So they're they're probably the best point for point unit. I would say in the game, from a okay. dirty meta gamer perspective, um, there for for flat points. If you just go like melee weapon and melta, um, you've got decent ranged with like maybe a plasma in the fist or something like that. Decent range popping for tanks, Spartans, um, and then you have a strength twelve um, brutal three close combat weapon, which is like brutal's hard enough to get as is in the meta. Yeah. Um, this thing comes stock with it and it just wrecks terminators it wrecks other dreadnoughts it wrecks characters um and it's got a two up toughness seven base profile which is fucking awesome with six wounds yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's true it's true i think one of the uh also the big thing with the dread the contemptor dreads specifically is their shielding rule which really um starts to kind of uh, set them apart from everything else. And basically, they can't be instant death, except when you do get hit with an instant death weapon, you end up taking additional D3 wounds. Makes Ooh. makes a Dreadnought pretty good, though. The, sorry, the other thing that can't be understated, that is probably their best attribute, is weapon skill 5, which is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, it's so like, five yeah, that, that is a big one. That's all, all the, tools, the biggest one. All the tools out there to deal with them in close combat, like melt -a bombs or something like that, yeah. you're typically hitting on fives with yeah. one shot. So you get like one chance five up to do D3 wounds to it, which is rough. So, yeah, so in the last, these three games that I had, out of two, two of the games, there was three dreadnoughts that I had to face. And Pretty much, it was my dreadnought facing off against their dreadnought. Right? So, they kill each other. Right? Like, <clears throat> it just, they deal so much damage to each other that eventually they just blow up. Um, I did face against two Leviathans, <laughs> which, uh, they're obviously no slouch either, but, um, you know, I got one of them down to one wound from shooting before I even got into combat, so... Shooting's still the way to go, I think, with the Dreadnoughts <laughs> to, to take them out. Um, but you, you need those last cans and stuff like that, right, to deal with them. Um, low point games, Contemptors are going to just rule the battlefield, in, in my opinion. Um, and like you said, Weapon Skill 5, that's, that's probably one of their hugest features. Marines, they're hitting on fives. Most units are hitting fives unless they're elite, right? So, and then they're what? You, they're strength nine? Their power fist is a strength nine? A strength nine or strength 12? Can I screw that up? Strength, yeah, the strength. Power fist. Yeah, brutal three. Which is, strength it's huge. Nine, brutal three. Yep. You know, you take, um, there's things that you can do to, to, with psychic powers to boost up your, your toughness. Like on, uh, on terminators to take them on but still it's a lot of uh a lot of points to sink into taking to take on a, a contemptor um and now if you know an army has more than one of them it is a struggle i don't i don't, I don't think they're like broken um they're just really hard to deal with right now and that right of war the the ancients Never really fought against it, so don't know at what point level you're going to play it at. If you're playing at 3,000 points, you're probably going to have the toys to deal with them, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think the one uh, uh, Fury of the Ancient list is, I believe, and let us know in the comments if this is right, but I'm pretty sure it was eight Contemptors and two Leviathan Dreads. Which is a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a lot that is a lot. With. Um, that's 10 good. units though yeah yeah 
So I, I don't like I, I played I played Mechanicus all the way through first edition, and I had uh, mostly monstrous creatures with toughness six seven with a you know a three up save. Um, what made them really weak though was weapon skill three, and modern contenders solved that problem. But toughness seven is tough to break, and they had a five up in vault two like with Castle Axe or Thanatars, and um, they are tough units to deal with. Like, there's no way, like, no doubt about it. What usually beats them, though, is ranged AP2. Knocks off wounds, makes them harder to deal with or, or easier to deal with, sorry, when they get close. Mm-hmm. And then uh, dedicated melee units will just wreck them. Like, and the other thing, too, is, like, when we do get into, you know, that 2,500 to 3,000 point range, you're going to see Primarchs, and Primarchs will wreck a or more one or two Contemptors by themselves, like without a doubt, especially like the melee centric ones, whether it's Ferris or Horus or Vulcan, with like, you know, their own brutal two, three weapons. Like they're oh, no yeah. wreck yeah. uh, Contemptors, yeah. no problem. Thunder Hammers. Yeah, Thunder Hammers will do it too. Yeah. Bring on your bring out your Indominus Terminators. And and as tough as they are, they do only have three attacks. Yeah. Yes. Like they're not it's not I, like they're hitting you with ten attacks. I found that like a with my Osiris or Siren Dreadnought for the Thousand Suns, you know, with its special weapon, getting strength 12 on it with Biomancy and stuff like that. Um, three attacks and you biff. It's like, damn, that was a waste. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay, you, like, you miss one and yeah. you wound, you're probably going to wound two for sure, but you miss one, you're only killing two models each yeah. turn. You haven't seen me roll though lately, so <laughs> it was yeah. uh, pretty bad. I think they have the potential to get bogged down um, if they're not supported properly, for sure. Um, I'm just kind of excited that they've actually gone to this point and they're good again, right? Like, Contemptors were okay last edition, um, but they're too easily just taken out with that random pot shot from a melted gun. And yeah. now, like, they're, they're big daddies on the battlefield. I, I think to echo the point Andy made... In the small games, probably up to 1,500 points at least, Contemptors are going to be like the apex predator on the table. Um, maybe maybe Iron Circle be able to kind of deal with them a little bit, but I think Contemptors are just very, very good for what they do. They're, they are strong, for sure. Yeah. So, we talked about how efficient they are and how awesome they are. Mm-hmm. Um how do you kill them? What are your options? Guns. Big guns. Yeah. At long range. Um, try to master a signal boosting your to hit on some kind of heavy weapon team or like I did rape your laser destroyers that I, I was using, right? Hitting on twos twin linked. Two shots each. <clears throat> Just using the last cans pretty much. Um, if there's anything that's shooting that has brutal, you know that. Fulmataris. Yeah, well, 20, was it 24 inches for them, for that yeah. missile? Yeah. So I mean, you'd hope to take the thing out. If not, it's it's coming down. It's it's going to be coming closer and closer to take you out, right? But, um, yeah. Again, um, Terminators, Power Fists, Thunder Hammers, Thunder Hammers. Yeah. Uh, I think will be your, your big one if you're going into melee for sure. Yeah. So, uh, Chain Fist, do they get a reroll? I can't remember if they get a reroll against Dreadnoughts. Maybe I think just... any, anything you can honestly squeeze with Murderous Strike to throw against it, I think is a good thing. Rolling the additional D3 is not to be underestimated. Um, mm. I really do think. A five-man Melta so, like tactical support squad will be one of your best bets. Uh, throw them in a Rhino and just drive for it. Rhino rush the shit out of it. Hopefully, hopefully you can jump out and get in there. Um, Shoot it and then Overwatch it. <laughs> wow, who knows, right? Like I'm suspecting if you jump out, you're within twelve. Um, you, so yeah, you're gonna move your Rhino up six inches, jump out, I guess, and then try and like get within the range, he might be able to react to you 
and move away outside of melter range. So that could that's hurt true. you a little right bit. Right up in his grill, one inch away. Well, that's essentially where you want to be, like right in their face, so you can shoot and then let them try and charge you and get the overwatch off. But it's uh, <laughs> it's risky business, man. Um, I'd prefer to deal with them at range. I really don't want to have to take Galvor back or Terminators against it uh, for two facts of I just don't want to get bogged down. I really don't. Um, and I think my Galvor back would have a harder time trying to do it because most of them are all AP3 unless I'm getting my rending uh, murder strike. So it's but hoping for sixes all the time is not the way it's not the way you want to be yeah. playing. So so what about the Rite of War? The Rite of War is interesting. I'm going to pull it up here. Because it's got some pretty cool stuff, actually. I got it here if you want. Sure, if you want to read us off. So attachment to this Rite of War has Contemptor Dreadnoughts, or gets to take Contemptor Dreadnought Talons as uh, troop choices. Legion Contemptor Dreadnought Talons may be taken as compulsory troop choices. And gain the line subtype so that gives them yeah mm. the single the legion contemptor dreadnought talon and the me composed of one dreadnought must be selected as attachments compulsory hq choice um per plus 30 points and basically they get upgraded to a, a four plus invulnerable save um limitations all compulsory troops must be contemptors no model with the legion consular or special rule the attachment be taken Except for, of course, like Legion Forge Lords, Primus, Medicaid, Legion Mortificators. Attachment using the Red of War may only include a single fast attack choice and a single heavy support choice and does not consist entirely of models with the Dreadnought unit subtype. Uh, detachment using this Red of War may not select Fortification. Attachment using this Red of War may not select a Lords of War. Uh, red, this Red of War may only be selected if the army is primary, as the primary detachment for the army. An army whose primary detachment is using this Red of War may not roll to seize the initiative. At least they made it primary, right? That's a nice little caveat to that because you could, I could definitely see people trying to roll this as a allied Secondary. list. Yeah, it'd be crazy. Um, one thing that you do get access to with the Fury of the Ancients list is you get the Venerable Ancient for thirty points. The Contemptor Dreadnought with this upgrade gains the character subtype Master of the Legion and Eternal Warrior special rules. And an iron halo increasing its invulnerable save to four plus, but not replacing all the effects of the automatic deflector. So may not uh, may not select the command squad or any other unit using the variant of the written new special rule. In addition, must be selected as the warlord. Uh, huh. So, so that, char uh, character dreadnought, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So we got it wrong. It's basically just it's probably nine contemptors and one leviathan. Because you can only take one heavy sport choice, right? Yeah. On the, well, you could take. Can't you take a talent? Yeah, <clears throat> I think uh, leviathans are three. Is it three uh, in a talent usually? Some of the squads have been changed. Like some of them are just two. I know a lot of the Karens are two. I'm looking now. Uh, Leviathan. Yep. May take two. Up to two additional leviathans. Is it two? Twenty points. Yeah. Okay. So you can take up to three. Womp womp. That's gnarly. Very, very, uh, very strong. So you're talking 10, maybe 11 models, right? Mm -hmm. Total. Now, can you deal with all that? Are you going to have enough weapons to deal with them? At 2 plus, it's really hard. 2 plus armor, I should say. Because I, I don't think there's enough... AP2 shooting to deal with it all. Unless you're building an army geared specifically for that. Yeah. Um, just because shooting's taken a bit of a hit in itself, right? Uh, most of the big tanks, most of the uh, um, Sakarans, Vindicators, Laser Destroyers, like all that stuff's pretty much getting... It's been reduced a little bit to AP3 for the majority. Um... Some of the other weapons are still potent, right? We know last cannons are still going to be really good, but there there are just little things that make them more survivable. That two plus armor save though was huge. 
the other thing is too, we're not like we're not talking about Legion specific even at this point. This is just the generic yeah, Astartes yeah. Rate of War. Like you start adding um, Iron, Iron Hands Iron to hands, this. Yeah. Is the is the is the standout one, obviously. Five plus it will not die. And that that's hard to deal with. I still like the idea of playing against it. I just I don't know. To me it doesn't seem like so over the top that there's no way to win. I think it'd be a lot of fun, especially with my uh, Iron Warriors to play. Yeah, I think your Iron Warriors are specifically built to deal with this though. <laughs> well yeah, that particular <laughs> style, sure. Yeah. Like I think I think from like a from a looking at it both ways, looking at it from a tournament perspective, if you're like um and again, this whole bullshit they're like, Oh, we're a narrative community and we don't play tournaments, blah 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 like two and a half of these lists showed up to the first Warhammer World tournament yeah. event. So like Ever. and it's the most narrative of V. So <laughs> there's no talk about Adepticon it's, banning right. It's a freaking themed it's a themed list. It's good, well, but it's, it's a theme list. It's thematic, right? for sure. Yeah, for sure. So I think I think at three thousand points, this this is not easy to deal with, but it's it's much easier to deal with. At twenty five hundred, it gets real tough. At two thousand, it's I would say for if you're playing Iron Hands, pretty impossible. Um, sub that, it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because at three K, you gotta remember as well, you're gonna be able to run a warhound as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I suspect the warhound will be able to deal with these kind of units with ease. Um, it depends what they've done with the shooting. To be honest with you, that's pretty much the same, based on the rules looks at least. But again, like you're. Your D weapons, like you shouldn't even have to take a warhound to deal with this red of war. I think reasonably, <laughs> like I said, if, uh, Vulcan and run. ten fire drakes are just going to plow through three or four dreadnoughts alone, mm -hmm. and they're half the cost. Like you, that's you know for for Vulcan and and you're talking about a thousand points, maybe let's say let's say fifteen hundred points, yeah. and and they will they will wreck half of this army. For that much, which is good. That's that's a good change. Fifteen hundred points out of three thousand to, to yeah. trade fifteen hundred points. Except they will still have models left, and you will not. That's true. That's true. I guess, I guess that's kind of an interesting way to look at it as well. Is with the uh, you're gonna make it over there, Andy? <laughs> um, with Death yeah. Stars, does taking Death Star units keep? Fury of the Ancient lists honest. Knowing that yes. you're able to go out at them at any point in time. Like I, I, I think in the in the sense of creating a balance, if you will, I know there's gonna be a Fury of the Ancients army at this event. This tournament, this insert whatever name, playstyle you want to call it, that's fine. And to ensure that I'm going to be able to deal with it, I think taking a Death Star would be one of your best options. Um, not being able to take a Primark, let's say, at 3,000 points would be probably detrimental to build in. Um, so, yeah, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. See, hey, that's where, yeah. Uh, you know, as you talked earlier about you know um banning this right of war or restricting these characters and not being able to have these characters well now you just cha changed a bit of the balance of the game right because like if somebody does take that list yeah. which is allowed let's say it's allowed in the event right someone does take that list but i can't take a primer I'm not saying that the primer is going to be the uh, be all end all to defeat that list it's another tool in your army like I'll take I'll take Angron in a world eaters list. No problem. Let's go chop up some dreadnoughts. No problem, right? Well, now I don't have access to that because I can't take character those named characters or whatever, right? Or Primarchs. Well, now it's a it's a bit of a different story. So I don't know. I just <sighs> restrictions and uh, and you know banning things. I, I'm not a fan, right? But that dreadnought list. Again, you guys nailed it. You know, Death Star unit, you nailed it with 
the fire drakes. I, I really don't have anything else for that. You know, there's, I'm sure there's other Terminator units that uh, that do well. Um, <clears throat> casting some spells like biomancy on a Terminator squad would help save them, right? In combat, make them uh, take a, a, an elite Terminator unit that has weapon skill five on its own to make it harder for that, you know, three or four attacks to hit you. And then pummel them with your chain fists that get re-rolls to wound or thunder hammers or whatever you're able to take, right? So, yeah. um, it's just, you end up, tr yeah, you end up kind of trading the elite arm, the elite units to go against it. Because most of just your regular units, your troops and, and, you know, whatever else, they're usually not weapon skill five or anything, right? And they, they may only have access to one type of that weapon and like, you know, you can't really get thunder hammers in mass in some kind of troop unit or something, right? So it is it is kind of like a perfect storm when you think about it, um, that allows this list uh, or this right of war to be janky, is that a lot of shooting lost AP two. Yeah. Yeah. Night fighting is almost a guarantee. No. Oh. Contemptors got tougher. Um, and are more durable across the board. Now they're getting, like, obviously they're getting line and, and, and feel no pains and stuff like that. And it yeah, will not yeah. die. And then the fourth thing is, um, you don't have, with weapon skill five, you don't have a standard approach to this. They have to, you have to trade elites for elites or heavies for heavies. And you can't trade shooting for elites here because the first two turns, there's a chance that you're only going to get 24 inches, which gives you one round. You're going to get one round of shooting against a Fury Ancient Slice yeah. before it hits your line. Um, one effective round. The second thing is, is your your melee units have to be on par with a contemptor. Have they have to be weapon scr uh, weapon skill five, and they have to have strength eight or higher weapons. And that's pretty rare, actually, when you look at it. And again, I'm coming from approaching this from as a as an Empress Children player now. A lot of my stuff is weapon skill five or six, or sorry, weapon skill five or six and strength five or six. But it's definitely not strength seven or eight. Yeah. Um. Which means I am as I can hit contemptors on fours or threes, but I'm always wounding on fives. Mm -hmm. Which makes it tough. Yeah, I didn't even yeah. you know what I didn't even uh, I didn't even think about the knight fighting against that right of war. Yeah, like two ter possibly two turns of knight fighting, and with your shooting, like you said. Yeah, <laughs> the fact the fact that they got faster, like they're they're moving yeah. eight inches eight and they got plus one to their. Like they are shuffling quick, and so. um, don't don't Blood Angels still have the jetpack dreadnought? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. So hmm. I don't know. Even, I'm not sure how that fits here because they're. I guess they technically. No, they're not. They're not a contemptor dreadnought talent. I don't think. Uh, they're they're their own specific choice. Kind of something yeah, okay. Else. Okay. So, which you're allowed. Like you have to. You'd have to take like a whole bunch of Blood Angel contemptors, but and you're allowed one. Um, you'd, you'd be allowed one fast attack choice, which would give you one of those talents as well. Okay. Hmm. Not really. But that means you've got three three deep striking versions of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Whoops. All the other <laughs> six charge at you, three land in your back line and just spread out and start wreaking havoc. Line up your weapon teams. There you go. And again, like I said, at 3,000 points, that all gets more comfortable like i think like i said I, I could build i could build a list with ec to take this no problem yeah i think like if i if i knew i was building if this like if we started going to events you know around north america here and you start running into like two or three of these lists at events that's probably going to be the meta that people are going to have to build for and because if you can deal with 10 dreadnoughts you can probably deal with a death star too yeah, um, yeah at the end of the day sure. so for like sure. People will start building. You'll see, like everyone will have just AP. They'll focus on AP two high strength weapons, no matter what it costs them. And you'll have elites units trading for elites units, uh, or heavy units trading for elite units across the board, or Death Stars dealing with it. I can see uh, Death Stars being on the rise, uh, Spartans or Charybdis um, transports for them, because if you can get the charge off and like wipe out two or three dreads on that first turn, uh, I think you could do a lot of damage. Yeah, the other thing too is like just from a scoring perspective, like this 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 list has to come across the table at you with ten models. It has to. Like eight yeah. eight have to come across the table. 
at any given point, which means two sit on objectives and they, they throw last cannon shots or something at you consistently. Um, but if they're paying for last cannon upgrades on two contemptors to sit back line, um, they're they actually probably can only afford nine dreadnoughts, for example. Like, so you got to deal with eight dreadnoughts in 3000 points. That's like, I, I, I don't, I don't know what I'm missing here. Like I, it's tough. Don't get me wrong, but it's not impossible by any means. Thus, I don't think it should be bad. No, I feel it. Yeah. I'm sure people disagree, but, um, you know, in, in my mindset, I, again, I really don't like, especially at this stage of the game, uh, where, you know, we're still pretty early in the game set of things like play it out, play it out and just get more info and get more results and stuff like that. You know what? Maybe right now it's it is the hot thing because it's it's just it's such a it's such a new thing like you know the one hit it's not a one hit wonder obviously but it's been around and it's hasn't gone away it's still here still same idea just a whole bunch of dreadnoughts but you know um, play it out and 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 see how it goes right maybe right now it is doing really good because nobody does know how to deal with it yeah. But I, start, I think that's the biggest thing. It's acting like a one-trick pony right now. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was pretty much getting to. So. I think I think in like uh, in six months, if we're all having conversations, like point to me on the dummy where the dreadnought theory of the ancients list, list touch you. <laughs> 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 we all have abuse stories and like yeah. you know, Dan's Dan's rolling around beating up kids with his his ten man contemptor fear of the ancients list. Watch. Um, Let's just then, it. Then we're then we're like okay we might reconsider at that point point. and like I said I think at three thousand points it's 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 you can deal with it at twenty five hundred it gets tougher at two thousand it's it's pretty abusable yeah yeah no for sure that's just it yeah if Dan if Dan quits Death Guard and you see him with his Iron Hand Contemptor Force just uh, beat him in the streets beat him in the streets we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna show up with a Tiger Van at his place. So six, we are going to six do in the this. morning when he comes out. What? We are going to do this. He's he's <laughs> he's built he's built the list. He said he's got them all assembled. They're you know half painted, but uh, I said I just need I got a, probably another few weeks for the painting. But we're going to try it. I'm going to I'm going to play his his fear of the legion list or fear of the ancients mm. list against my three thousand point AC, and I don't have like like I'm like I've got maybe a death star. Don't get me wrong. I've got I'll have fulgrim and eidolon and you know and I. Spartan probably, but um, I kind of just got what I have. And yeah. We'll see how how bad it is. It makes me wonder. Mm-hmm. I, I do wonder how uh, twenty Galvorback would do, backed up with uh, some characters. Can you give him power fists? My Galvorback, uh, yeah. one for every five. So they're gonna have two. That's yeah, not enough. It's like it's not. It's not the best. No. The other thing too is like we've got you know this might be janky now, uh, you know before anyone does anything about it, but we've got Mechanicum coming out, we've got Custodes coming out, we've yeah. got Solar Auxiliary coming out, and we've got Ruin Storm coming out. And looking at Kabanda's rule set, Kabanda could truck some fucking contemptors. I was gonna like, say how seven m- days of the week, <laughs> take a shit ton by himself. So yeah. It, it just right now it's it seems like that right now but like alex is saying when all the other toys come out on the board it might be a completely different story so uh, it'll be interesting to see it'd be interesting to see those other armies too what changes they made to them you know get some of our local players who played them in the last edition to see what they're they've changed you know and whatnot. I know Alex is going to be excited with the Mechanicum. See what they change for them. It's I like the the temporals here that I've seen. I think it's their uh, the second edition playtesting rules um, mm-hmm. are super exciting. Super exciting. Like I, I hated them mostly because they nerfed Haywire into the ground <laughs> and my oh, oh. my my easy win button got taken away from me. But mm-hmm. uh, now. 
they like they look super thematic like you have to take multiple magoses um they fit they they're very thematic like the magos has like all this additional technology and special skills and special weapons to deal with like you can take magos to deal with contemptors for example you can take magos that you know just throws artillery you can take magos as the buff you know myrmidons um it's it's super exciting to see like the army refocus around having a magos whereas before, before it was like oh you need you took scoria or you took a magos just for points because you needed them and <clears throat> you spent all your points on something else whereas like now like it's 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 super thematic to have like at least one or more magoses in your list and they're like they're they're going to be involved in the fighting they're not just sitting there buffing a unit of cast wax or sitting in a unit hiding for the entire game it's it's, it's actually very exciting mm. nice it's gonna be legit. Nice. I'm pretty pumped. I'm pretty pumped. So except for fucking knights. So contemptors super good. Support squads not so good. Contemptors are really good, and I, I honestly look forward to seeing more games with them. Um, I don't mind playing against them with my word bearers because the Maragall dreadnought can uh, do some damage. Yep. To their contemptors first, so it's like an anti contemptor. Because it's faster and it yeah. what skill six, so it's gonna kick the shit out of contemptors. Yeah, nice. I do like that, but yeah, like, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the right of war in action. Yeah, you have to let us know uh, what. Like uh, those. What what I like about it, honestly, is like I'm building I'm building lists, I'm building Mariscar lists, I'm building third company elite lists, <clears throat> and I'm I'm dumping at least one or two contemptors in and what i, I it's kind of cool is like for each tactical squad i take i usually actually have a contemptor with them yeah. and it's it's actually like you know i'm not i'm not I, I would say i'm not abusing it but it's very thematic like i've oh, got awesome. i've got infantry supported by like a tank unit and i've got you know they're all kind of moving up and they've got their roles and i've got a bully unit that's attached to a tactical to help them deal with situations and it feels like it's a thematic choice now and i don't feel like it's being abused the way it's played currently. I like that. I can agree. Mm -hmm. I can agree. I'd like to see more uh, more contemptors backing up their bros, right? Just hordes of tactical marines. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I guess it just it's a matter of how many. What else you're going to use those elite slots for, right? Yeah, more contemptors. Well. <laughs> There's other units, right? Yeah. What? Really? Rape mm -hmm. your batteries, man. Rape your batteries. They could yeah, work. I guess. They could Terminators. Stuff like that, right? But yeah. it also depends on right of war you take. Veterans as well. I like them. Sometimes veterans you're spicy. Sometimes you're veterans, or sometimes your Terminators been becoming troops, and now you're open up to a whole bunch of dreadnoughts. And contemptors, right? As elites, so yeah, would be interesting. Nice. Would be nice. Interesting. Right on. Okay, well, I think that wraps up this round, you guys. Um, yep. Thanks everybody for tuning, in, listening. Let us know what you think about our uh, contemptor breakdown. If uh, I think we're full of shit, or if you think we're legit, <laughs> I, I, I honestly think it's going to be pretty legit. I think in the months to come. I think you'll see things kind of even out a little bit and it won't be such a knee jerk reaction. So remember play three K it's the way and uh, you'll be able to deal with most stuff anyways. So yes. thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys next time. See you guys. Peace. Trident Wargaming. Build it, paint it, play it.